Hello, I'm Aditya Nayandar and welcome to Next Tech. Here's a question. How do you securely move dozens of troops from a naval vessel out at sea to land in just a matter of minutes? Well, you hop on a vehicle like this. So come with me as I take a ride on one of Turkey's most advanced amphibious assault vehicles. So this is the Zaha Marine Assault Vehicle, or MAV for short. It's designed and manufactured by a company called FNSS, one of Turkey's leading defense companies when it comes to armored vehicles. Now, what makes this MAV so unique is that it's one of the crown jewels of Turkey's drive to create indigenous technologies, both to safeguard national security while also sharing the equipment with partners abroad. Armored personnel carriers first appeared in large numbers early in World War II when the German army adopted them to carry infantry divisions into battle. But the amphibious versions came to use towards the end of the war. And who could forget the opening scene of one of the best war films ever? An infantry division in Saving Private Ryan storming the beaches of Normandy under heavy machine gun fire. The company's MAV is powered by a diesel engine that provides a 20 horsepower to ton power weight ratio. The vehicle is able to carry 21 passengers, including a gunner, driver, and commander. When it comes to mobility, the armored carrier can reach a maximum speed of 70 kilometers per hour on land. In water, the MAV can reach a top speed of seven knots, allowing marine units to land quickly. Those are some of the technical specs. I met up with Jehun Suar, one of the company's program directors, to talk about the most important aspect, its armor. The time that this MAV leaves the landing vehicle, by the time it gets to land, that period of time is perhaps the most vulnerable in terms of coming under attack. Talk to us about how this monster uh, is equipped with uh, some of the uh, defense capabilities to ensure that the people inside don't die. Sure, sure. MAV uh, has a high level of ballistic and armor protection, secured through the design of the ballistic hull and use of add-on armor. And also inside the vehicle, we use spall liners in case there is any penetration to stop any fragments and they avoid you know, the damaging the people inside. In addition, uh, the vehicle is equipped with the, the equipment like uh, fire suppression systems, uh, CBR and protection systems, air conditioning system, and the smoke generator and the smoke grenade dischargers, actually, which further ensuring the, uh, the survival, survival and the protection of the, the crew in the combat situations. But the first line of defense is, is this really thick uh, coat of steel. It's a special design to actually assure uh, the certain level of protection required by the user. So it's a special design, uh, the, the hull, ballistic hull, and also uh, the armor protection uh, is, is increased further by using add-on armor system. One of the biggest threats uh, to a vehicle like this would probably, I'm assuming, would be uh, an, an improvised explosive device. Uh, yes. And we're talking about uh, perhaps hundreds of kilos of that uh, placed uh, in the track of this, um, and, and, and a vehicle of this type is actually able to withstand the blast force of that. Sure, sure. You know, the, the MAV is mainly uh, actually uh, used by the Marines for amphibious operations, but as you also stated at the beginning, when the vehicle lands and on, in, the, in the land, it actually operates like a, the combat vehicle along with the other uh, uh, the, the vehicles. So uh, the vehicle also provides protection against IEDs uh, in case of operation uh, on land. 
This MAV's main task is to ferry troops safely and securely from sea to land. Think of it as a military taxi that can navigate through water on land and up and down steep hills. So now we're going to see how it operates in the water. Once I give the command, you can really feel the power of the engine. The MAV slowly crawls down a ramp and into a pool. It's four meters deep, and it's right about now where I'm wondering if I should have gotten in and closed the hatch. The jet flow of water you're seeing indicates that the thrusters are working. This means the tracks of the MAV are no longer in contact with the bottom, and the vehicle is floating. And for a multi-ton land vehicle, this MAV is extremely maneuverable, even in water. Now any commander knows the battlefield is rarely a nicely paved flat road. Military vehicles need to navigate all sorts of terrain and most importantly, different elevations. The MAV behind me, despite weighing dozens of tons, can drive up a slope of 60%, allowing it to go almost anywhere. All right, time to get out from under the blistering sun and head inside to talk to the company's CEO. Niall Kurt has been heading the company for more than 15 years. He's played an important role in turning FNSS into a global player. Niall Bey, thank you very much for speaking to us. We just had a chance to check out uh, the Marine Assault Vehicle. Um, what, is, what does its development mean for FNSS? Uh, it means a lot. It means uh, uh, something that we have uh, created based on our 30, almost 35 years of experience in armored vehicles area and also uh, an expertise on amphibious vehicles of this sort. So uh, when it came to uh, on the table, uh, the requirement I mean, we had uh, in-depth discussions with the government, with uh, Navy, with SSB especially, and uh, the, the trust and uh, confidence uh, that the government gave us on developing something like that from scratch uh, eventually resulted in a, a contract signed and uh, as of today we are very very uh, uh, proud to uh, start the delivery. Besides Turkey's um, strategic geopolitical strategic uh, location I think the fact that the country is surrounded by three different seas, uh, clearly states that this MAV is, is, is a very critical asset uh, in, in the country's uh, national security. You have to be deterrent. Uh, and uh, one, one very important aspect of being deterrent is having the power in the sea as much as on the land and in the air. So, yeah, this uh, new approach of Turkey uh, extends beyond the uh, you know conventional ship uh, warships and this is to like have some something to say beyond your own land yeah. so uh, in this respect I think Zahas used in uh, LHD ships mean a lot to new Turkish uh, approach and concept this company actually has has humble beginnings it started off with with licensing but uh, when you look at the company today uh, more than 30 years on, it is in a position where it is uh, indigenously developing uh, um, from A to Z, uh, from design to, to, to the production of, of the final product. Uh, and this shows you how much not only the company has grown, but also the Turkish defense industry as well. And it's placed itself in a unique position. Yeah, uh, I, I think, I mean, looking back uh, 30 years ago and coming to today, you can, I mean, when you examine FNSS history, you will see a lot of reflections, the similarities with the development of Turkish defense industries. I can say all of those companies, big companies, you know, we were born very close to each other and uh, growing together. 
Uh, so FNSS is no exemption to them to, from that family in Turkey. Uh, but to many respects, we stand uh, like we have many firsts, let's say. Uh, we, we are the first uh, private sector defense company established in Turkey. That means a lot. Uh, we are one of the very long lasting international JVs. That's another thing. Uh, we still hold a lot of uh, firsts in terms of exports. The very first systems export, platform system export, rather than just ammunition, rifles, this and that. So uh, the one we realized to United Emirates in 97, I believe, uh, was the very first Turkish defense system export to, to a friendly country. Then the very first uh, technology transfer, which uh, we made to Malaysia, uh, was also at the time the biggest single export contract, defense contract, that was achieved by FNSS. Later on, the biggest, again, continued with our 8x8 sales to Malaysia. Uh, I believe, as far as I know, we are the first, again, company who operated a military uh, facility abroad that was in Saudi Arabia and it lasted for like 15 years. So a lot of firsts achieved by FNSS in the Turkish uh, defense uh, industries and that, that constitutes uh, or resulted in FNSS being the biggest uh, land systems exporter, defense exporter in Turkey. I think as of today, we still hold the record by far. Harbi, thank you very much. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Companies like FNSS have seen many firsts for Turkey's defense industry. And that's exactly the overarching theme here. Build the technology at home and then export it to your closest partners. You know, many of the vehicles lined up here could very easily be exported abroad, helping Turkey cement closer ties with the Middle East all the way out to the Asia Pacific region. Well, that's it for this edition of Next Tech. I'm Adi Janayanlar, and I'll see you next time.